Hi everyone and welcome to Outside the Ropes. I'm Tom Hannafin. I am joined by the Impact World Champion, Josh Alexander. Josh, thank you so much for coming on. This is an exciting time of year. Bound for Glory, the biggest event of the year is coming up. It's right around the corner, Friday, October 7th in Albany, New York, live on pay-per-view and Fight TV. Are you feeling the pressure of this time of year? I don't think the pressure ever changes. I've been feeling pressure ever since I won the Impact World Championship. Every single pay-per-view, whether, you know, it's slam anniversary against Eric Young with VBD and all this stuff, the pressure you feel going on last after following, you know, match after match of these Impact Wrestling shows, it's gonna be no different about for Glory. And like you said, it's the biggest show of the year, so the stakes are that much higher. Physically, how are you feeling throughout this championship reign? It's something Alex Shelley uh, touched on in the contract signing you two had. I mean, I. If I said I was 100%, I'd be lying to you. But uh, we're professional wrestlers. This is what we do. We have to adapt. We have to push through these things. And, uh, you know, each defense has worn on me a little bit. Ishii took a piece of me. Eric Young took a piece of me. Alex Shelley certainly took a piece of me. But uh, it's up to me to just rise to the occasion and push through. The, the people you've defended the title against, it's a who's who. Moose, Ishii, you mentioned Young, Doring, Shelley. What do you think you took away from each of those encounters? I mean, they're all very different professional wrestlers. So every single time you're in the ring, I'm testing myself to a different style or a different approach of pro wrestling. So I I'm learning a lot about myself every single defense. And, uh, you know, I just haven't found that one thing that's going to make me quit. And I don't think there is something that's going to make me quit. That's why I'm the Impact World Champion. So at Bound for Glory, you'll be defending the Impact World Championship against Eddie Edwards. We're on the heels of Victory Road. Eddie Edwards managed to pin you in a six-man tag team match at Victory Road. It's the first time you've been pinned since last year's Bound for Glory, and obviously we know how that went down with Moose, the call your shot gauntlet in front of your own family. What did that pinfall loss to Eddie trudge up inside of you? I have a ton of respect for Eddie Edwards. Everything he's done, through, I followed his career for the past two decades. Everything he's done here in Impact Wrestling, the man's been the heart and soul of this company, and now, you know, with everything going on with Hunter no more, it doesn't surprise me that Eddie was able to beat me in that six-man tag at Victory Road. Eddie is one of the best wrestlers in the world. He proved it. Uh, it just shows that, you know, I gotta go back to the drawing board and uh, it opened my eyes for Bound for Glory because going into the main event defending this championship, I don't want to let go of this championship. Like I said, I want to be a defending championship. I want to go down to history books as one of the greatest champions of all time, and uh, Eddie's, now he's got to be the biggest adversary I've faced since. I would argue that historically in the history of Impact Wrestling, you're one of the most important Impact World Champions considering everything that this company has endured. Obviously, this year we celebrated 20 years of Impact Wrestling, and you and I were talking before we got started here is that Bound for Glory 2021 marked the beginning of Impact Wrestling, getting back in front of live fans coming out of the pandemic. So this year's Bound for Glory has to be all the more special for you. Well, it's all the more special because last year at Bound for Glory, I challenged, you know, a legend in Christian Cage for this world championship, and I won it. And then it was taken away from me in an instant by Moose. So now, a year later, through everything I've been through to get this championship and defend this championship, now stepping foot in the ring at Bound for Glory in front of one of the biggest crowds we're going to have to put Impact Wrestling on the map, put me on the map, and then defend this world championship. It's, it's all growth, it's all good. It was six months to get from last year's Bound for Glory to Rebellion to win the World Championship back. But as we talked about during the call for that match with you and Moose at Rebellion is that it was really 17 years in the making of that. That championship was ripped away from you and that's all you ever wanted. Do you think you get to the Impact World Championship without your family? No, absolutely not. I don't think I get to the Impact Championship without everything I went through throughout those 17 years. I don't think I get to the Impact World Championship without breaking my neck and having this entire thing taken away from me in an instant. I learned a lot about myself sitting in that hospital bed. I learned that I took what I had for granted before then, and that's why I came back and I built myself back better. The only reason I'm standing here as a World Championship caliber contender or champion is because of all those hardships I had. My family, they're the ones pushing me. They're the ones, like, to have my son Jet look at me like I'm a superhero, you know, when, <laughs> I'm in the ring with Moose and I just got torn in half by a spear and I'm thinking about giving up. I'm thinking about not raising my shoulder because everything in my body hurts. 
I'm thinking about him in the front row with my wife, wanting to see me win this world championship. That's something that pushes me further than I can push myself. It's, it's so impressive, and we talked about it at Rebellion, is that Jen and Jet were right there in the front row, and you made your entrance with Jet. So, it was so cool, and it's amazing to see him backstage at certain events because he's really become part of the Impact family, and I'm sure he's going to be uh, the Impact World Champion in 20 years. He already thinks he is. He already so. thinks he is. But some people might look at that as a as a distraction, having family around, you know, in the you know in a competitive environment. But you've embraced it. What was that mental hurdle for you to the point where it's like I need to embrace this? I mean. It takes a lot of focus, you're right. It is kind of a distraction, having your family run around, having to worry about them at the same time while I'm worrying about my match later on that night and stuff like that. But uh, like I said, they're the ones that are pushing me and I don't want to push myself. So you, you mentioned having you know, Jet kind of being embraced and being a part of the Impact family. And that's why another reason why this company means so much for me. That's another reason why I keep fighting for this company and fighting for this championship and fighting to be the face of the company. So. You talked about two instances where you needed surgery to repair your neck. What were some of the questions you were asking yourself in that hospital bed? Before or after the doctor told me I was capable of coming back? Well, I mean, before there was no questions. I, I had already come to terms with the fact that I was never going to be able to do this again. I was just, you know, hoping and praying to, like, whatever I might believe that, you know, I'd be okay with it, that I'd find some sort of solace in life without professional wrestling, because this is the only thing I've ever been good at, the only thing I've ever known, the only thing that ever gave me any sort of like validation in my life, right? But then the second the doctor, you know, started telling me that my, my injury wasn't as bad as, you know, they, they had thought by the MRI, I already knew what he was gonna say. I knew he was gonna tell me I could come back to wrestling, I just had to rehab it. Before it even came out of his mouth, it was already going through my head, I was just like, what am I gonna do? Like, how, how am I gonna be able to come back? And like I said, it's, you have a flash of all these things you took for granted along the way. I was a very talented wrestler, but I never put in the work. So. You know, it, it's just an instant, it's like a lightning bolt, a light switch just flipped in my head. It's just like, if you come back, you have to work harder than you've ever worked before. So you can be better than you've ever built, or been before, so. Now fast forward to 2022, you're the Impact World Champion. You're largely considered one of the best professional wrestlers alive. Did you have, did you even think that was a possibility after getting the go ahead to, to come back to wrestling? No, 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 and I don't think it was ever the goal. Like, I, I, I just wanted to be the best wrestler I could be, whether that was considered to be the best wrestler in the world or one of the best wrestlers in the world. That, that, that never even showed on my mind. That seemed like an insurmountable goal to attain to me. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's taking steps, and every rung on the ladder is climbing, you know, higher and higher. And I always want to progress and better myself and move in one direction. And if I'm not bettering myself, then I'm not actually doing anything with my life that's going to give me any sort of like like happiness. So it, it's just achieving one goal, setting the next goal, and here I am. I keep climbing and climbing and climbing, and after beating all these people and doing all these things I've done, you know, in the past three and a half years in Impact Wrestling, to be considered one of the best wrestlers in the world. It's something unbelievable, but it's also obviously very it, It's amazing, especially considering how the landscape of professional wrestling is constantly changing. There's always something new that's popping up. And the one thing that I think that stands out uh, to me regarding yourself is your loyalty to Impact Wrestling. Obviously, you and Executive Vice President Scott DeMora go a long ways back. He's been influential on in your career. But for you to be at the spearhead of what Impact Wrestling is doing right now, what does that mean to you? Impact, I have dabbled in and out of companies that could have offered me contracts and have talked about offering me contracts throughout my entire career. I never got those contracts. Impact was the first company that looked at me and said, we're going to give you an opportunity. You're not the best unsigned talent out there in the world. Yes, you are. You're the hottest rising star in Impact Wrestling, and you got a three-year I think the only thing we can ask for is opportunities. It's up to us to make the best of it. So like we said, after all those 17 years of everything I've been through, by the time Impact Wrestling signed me, I was prepared for those opportunities. I was prepared to get the ball, and I knew I wouldn't drop it. And that's why I'm standing here right now after three and a half years as Impact World Champion. The reason I'm so loyal is because Impact was that company that said, okay, we're going to give you these opportunities, and that's all they've done. So like, the only thing I can do to repay them is to just give them my loyalty. And now you're walking into Bound for Glory. 
mentioned, Friday, October 7th, live pay-per-view Fight TV, the 18th annual Bound for Glory. It's the biggest event of the year for Impact Wrestling. Eddie Edwards, he's called it a war between not only himself and I don't know more against Impact Wrestling, but the battle line's been drawn between you two. Do you buy in the Eddie's propaganda? No, no, no. I, <laughs> if you look at, like, especially just the past year, dealing with Moose, dealing with Eric Young and Violent by Design, I've dealt with all these, like, mind games and all these different sorts of, like, people have their different opinions on what reality might be. To me, reality is you step in that ring and you see who the best is one-on-one -on -one every single time. And I think Eddie Edwards is one of the best, but his whole gripe with Impact Wrestling and this Honor to More thing, like, it's all excuses. I'm not, a, I'm not a person, do I seem like a person that <laughs> is about excuses? No. Uh, so it's about accountability. So Eddie Edwards needs to take accountability for himself. He wasn't good enough to get the job done when he challenged Moose for that world championship last year. Eddie Edwards, you know, being the heart and soul of Impact Wrestling takes exception that he wasn't the one chosen to challenge Kenny Omega when others were. I understand that, but these are all excuses. If you weren't chosen for that, you get to work and you show them that they were wrong. You don't come in with Honor No More and all these, you know, other people at your side and try to say there's a war going on for the very fabric of what Impact Wrestling might be, okay? I'm fighting for Impact Wrestling. He wants to fight for Honor No More. We're gonna find out one-on-one -on -one who the greatest wrestler is at Bound for Glory. Personally, I've seen the way that Eddie Edwards has conducted himself, uh, the, the way that he spoke to his own wife, Alicia. This is my family now. Am I still? Your family? I don't know, Alicia. That is up to you. It, it seems like polar opposites with what your relationship is with your family and what Eddie Edwards has done to his own family to get to this point. And, it, and it's just so strange that now we've got to this situation at Bound for Glory that you called Eddie Edwards some, the heart and soul of Impact Wrestling. I disagree. I'd say at this point, you are the heart and soul of Impact Wrestling. Do you think that eats at Eddie Edwards? Absolutely. I, I think that's the whole reason why this is all happening right now. The other portion is he wants to be Impact Wrestling World Champion. Everybody on this company wants to be Impact Wrestling World Champion. Standing at the mountaintop, I know there's all these people trying to knock me off at all times, and Eddie Edwards is just the next person in line. For him to, you know, push away his wife and do this other stuff, you know, that would go against what Eddie Edwards has stood for for so long, it just shows that, you know, it's eating away at him even more. You have one last message for Eddie Edwards ahead of Bound for Glory, what would it be? I don't see this as a war. You might see it as honor no more against Impact Wrestling. I think this is all about Impact Wrestling. If you were Mr. Anything is Possible. You were the heart and soul of this company, and now you stand as an outsider by your choice. These are all excuses. At Bound for Glory, there's no more time for excuses. We find out one-on-one -on -one who the true heart and soul of this company is. We're gonna find out who fights for Impact Wrestling, who stands as the face of this company coming out of Bound for Glory, and who is world champion.